Well, there's a new twist in the crisis in Darfur. The United Nations Security Council has angered officials in Sudan by insisting that UN peacekeepers share information about the LRA, a rebel group. The request comes as the UN votes to keep its peacekeeping force in Darfur, but at a much smaller number than in previous years. The UN Security Council is extending the UN African Union Peacekeeping Force for Darfur, UNAMID, for another year. The council expressed concern at the continued violence in the vast western region, which started in 2003 between the native non-Arab tribes and Arabs backed by the Khartoum government. Darfuris accuse Khartoum of political and economic marginalization. However, the resolution reduced the number of UNAMID peacekeepers to just under 19,000 military and police personnel, down from close to 24,000. While the decision to extend the mandate was nearly unanimous, some members of the council, including Russia and China, who hold veto power, and Khartoum officials, reportedly raised issue with the inclusion of language on the Ugandan rebel group, the Lord's Resistance Army, in the draft resolution on UNAMID. A senior UN official said earlier this year that LRA leader Joseph Kony may have slipped into Darfur. The resolution says the council encourages UNAMID within existing capacities and consistent with its mandate to cooperate and share information on the rebel group. Kony is wanted by the International Criminal Court in The Hague on war crimes charges. An Azerbaijan envoy abstained from the vote, saying that his nation supported the force but had reservations about the text. Sudan's UN ambassador complained that the reference to the LRA, which has been circulating within Uganda, Central African Republic and South Sudan, was unwarranted. The LRA is known as a rebel uh, group it's a terrorist group which Sudan condemns. Uh, its main theater is Uganda. It's a Ugandan rebel group. Sudan doesn't share any borders with Uganda. So we, we do not find any logic in uh, linking UNAMID with the LRA. Joseph Kony has invaded the region's militaries for nearly three decades, kidnapping thousands of children to fill the ranks of his LRA group and often forcing them to serve as sex slaves as he moves through the bush. Thousands of people have reportedly been killed by his brutal army. This is the guy, Joseph Kony. Kony was thrust back into the spotlight earlier this year when a video, Kony 2012, highlighted the chilling mutilations, rapes and murders carried out by his devout fighters went viral on the Internet. The African Union is assembling a U.S.-backed special force of 5,000 troops from Uganda, South Sudan, Democratic Republic of Congo and the Central African Republic with the aim of hunting down the shadowy LRA leader. Regarding the resolution on Darfur, non-Arab rebels took up arms in 2003, and a year later, the government sent troops and allied Arab tribes into the region to quell the insurgency, unleashing a wave of violence that United Nations estimates has killed as many as 300,000 people. Officials in Khartoum say the number of dead is closer to 10,000. Now, for more discussion on the situation in Darfur, I'm joined by Mohamed Yaya, founder and executive director of the Damanga Coalition for, Demo for Freedom and Democracy. Damanga works to promote the human rights of the people living in Darfur and to ensure the preservation of their ethnic communities. Mr. Yaya, thank you for being on In Focus with us today. Thank you so much for having me here back again. So your thoughts on the extension of the mandate uh, to have peacekeepers in Darfur and also amidst the backdrop that there is this continuing violence. What is the situation? Uh, first of all, actually, uh, we, we welcome that uh, initiative uh, by the United Nations and, uh, you know, to extend the time for the UNAMIT uh, uh, to be in Darfur for one year or more. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are uh, worried and we are uh, disappointed by, uh, you, know, uh, you know, decreasing and, uh, and getting uh, the, the, the numbers of, uh, of uh, reducing the numbers of uh, the, you know, the, the, the peacekeepers. Yeah, we understand the, that they're going to be reconfigured and maybe just limited to a specific area. Why is that? Uh, that's what I don't understand because uh, uh, Ban Ki-moon who decided uh, that. Uh, but as Darfuri, I, 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 my worries, uh, you know, we, we have an experience about, uh, you know, the large number of peacekeepers for uh, over years in Darfur. Mm -hmm. And still they, they, they were not effective. Mm -hmm. Imagine right now when they reduce these numbers. That is something really, uh, you know, 
make us uh, worried. Uh, and also people in Darfur, they are not uh, that very happy about that because they think uh, the, the, they will never be effective as before. And, uh, and that, is, uh, that will really lead to other difficulties uh, in the future. Now, talking about the source of this conflict and the peace, I know that there was a protest last, just, just recently actually, over more to do with commodities, increasing in fuel prices. Six people were killed and there's been that kind of violence. But is the violence sporadic or is it still among the non-Arab and the Arab groups from Khartoum and Darfur? That's a good question. Actually, yes, this uh, you know uprising is really sporadic, and it's going on and on, and it's expanded to so many other people who are not even Darfuris, who are not even uh, you know might be even people from uh, you know Blue Nile or from different areas who were affected, even Arabs who are really uh, you know most of them rich and they are really living very comfortably. Right now, they are you know they are joining the, mm -hmm. the, the, this movement mm -hmm. and they are uh, demonstrating across the country because it is. It become very expensive to live in Sudan, mm -hmm. not only in Khartoum, everywhere in Sudan. You know, despite you know, and especially this is I think after uh, you know the secession of uh, South of Sudan, South Sudan, and the, uh, most of the oil uh, you know uh, you know went to the other part, and uh, the government right now is struggling, mm -hmm. and the situation has become really especially with the, know, oil, the cut in the oil production, etc. Exactly. Now, before um, we run out of time, this issue about the LRA. Now it seems as though the peacekeeping duties will even be more diluted because part of their mandate now is also to inform and cooperate in the capture of LRA soldiers, including the leader, Joseph Kony. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Is he in Darfur, as um, some officials have speculated? I believe uh, Joseph Kony is yes, in Darfur for quite a long time. Uh, really? es yes, especially after, you know, after the peace agreement that uh, really negotiated between, you know, and organized by South Sudan. You know, in back in 2006 until 2008, you know, and that has failed. And you know, then he moved from from uh, you know from Uganda inside Sudan and South Sudan, and then to Darfur. And he really took Darfur as his safe haven because he moved freely, and uh, used by the government of Sudan, you know, supported them and given them logistics and used them as a proxy. You so know, are you concerned that it's going to reshape the direction of the peacekeeping mission in Darfur? Yes, absolutely. You know, if it still continue to stay in Darfur, that will really uh, make it difficult for 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 Darfur situation, which is already you know uh, you know de you know de horrifying, and uh, well, it's not going to be good. It's mm -hmm. not going to be uh, good at all. Well, thank you. We appreciate you coming into our studios to You're update welcome. us on what's going on in Darfur. Thank you so much for uh, having me. It's always again. a pleasure. Always thank a pleasure. You. That's Wonderful. Mohammed Yaya, founder and executive director of the Damanga Coalition for for Freedom and Democracy, he joins us here on In Focus.